What's up, y'all? Big Snoop Deal Double G. I want to welcome y'all to my house, the dog house. This is the room where nobody gets to kick it at. It's called the untouchable room. Touch on bases. Do you remember that golden age of MTV? where music videos ruled the airwaves and reality TV was still fresh and exciting. In that era, one show, MTV Cribs, ruled the entertainment world. It wasn't about singing or dancing, or even drama. It was about something far more alluring. A peek behind the velvet curtain, a chance to gawk at the extravagant palaces where our favorite celebrities lived. We gasped at Mariah Carey's infinity pool overlooking New York City. We drooled over Shaquille O'Neal's personal movie theatre. We even chuckled at Vanilla Ice's fish tank shaped like a giant shrimp. Cribs wasn't just a show, it was a cultural phenomenon. A window into a world of unimaginable wealth and excess. But like all empires, even Cribs couldn't withstand the sands of time. The glitz and glamour that once dazzled us started to feel excessive and the show came to fall. So what happened to the show that had us glued to our screens, noses pressed against the glass? Let's reveal the story of the ultimate rise and drastic fall of MTV Cribs. Hey, it's Chris Angel. I want to welcome you to my 22,000 square foot estate known as Serenity. Come on in. MTV Cribs is an American documentary television show that originally aired on MTV from 2000 to 2010. Now, the classic show, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, hosted by Robin Leach, had been showcasing the opulent homes of celebrities since its inception. MTV saw an opportunity to cater to a younger audience with a similar concept, but with a more irreverent and music-focused twist. With the boom of boy bands, pop stars and teen idols, fans were increasingly curious about the lives of their favorite celebrities beyond the stage. MTV capitalized on this fascination by offering a glimpse into the private world of these stars, their homes serving as a tangible symbol of their success and fame. The idea for Cribs is credited to Nina L. Diaz, an MTV executive who felt that there was a gap in the network's programming for a show that appealed to viewers' tendencies. She pitched the concept as a way to humanize celebrities and make them more relatable to their fans. MTV Cribs was developed with a simple format. A celebrity would provide a tour of their home, accompanied by narration that offered commentary and humor. Each 30-minute episode was documentary style. It started with a celebrity opening the front door, introducing themselves, and saying, welcome to my crib. A steady cam followed the celebrity through the home, taking lots of close-up shots to make viewers feel like they were walking through the home themselves. The pilot episode, featuring Mariah Carey's New York penthouse, was strategically chosen for its potential impact and publicity. To bring this vision to life, a small production team was assembled to focus on capturing the unique features of each home and the personalities of the celebrities. In its early days, Cribs adopted a filming style that used handheld cameras and embraced an unscripted approach to convey a behind-the-scenes atmosphere. Amanda Lewis was the initial narrator, infusing the show with a witty and sarcastic voice that would become a signature element. The show premiered on September the 29th, 2000 with Mariah Carey's episode, immediately capturing audience attention with high ratings and generating buzz. However, the show faced challenges early on. Securing celebrities to participate was initially difficult, as some were hesitant to open their homes to cameras. Additionally, maintaining a balance between humor and respect for the celebrities' privacy was an ongoing production challenge. To keep the format fresh and engaging, Cribs evolved over time to include additional elements such as interviews, challenges, and even home invasions. These adjustments helped the show remain popular and relevant throughout its run. MTV Cribs quickly became a pop culture phenomenon, captivating millions of viewers who were eager to get a glimpse inside the lavish homes of their favorite celebrities. At the time, the show offered a unique and intimate look into the private lives of stars, filling a gap in the entertainment landscape. Its mass appeal allowed audiences to satisfy their curiosity about how the rich and famous lived, adding to its widespread popularity. One of the show's key draws was the humor and personality injected by its early narrators, Ananda Lewis and Su Chin Pak. Their witty commentary and engaging delivery turned Cribs into more than just a house tour. It became an entertaining and engaging viewing experience. Additionally, Cribs boasted an impressive lineup of celebrity guests, ranging from A-list music stars to reality TV personalities. 
This diverse array of guests ensured that there was something for everyone, contributing to the show's broad appeal and lasting impact on popular culture. Cribs took viewers on tours of celebrity mansions and sparked countless Can You Believe They Have That Moment was a huge hit in popular culture by 2005. Over 185 stars, from music icons like Mariah Carey and Snoop Dogg to Hollywood stars like Will Smith and Angelina Jolie, had opened their homes to viewers. The show's early years were narrated by the sassy Ananda Lewis, whose funny comments became a signature, followed by the equally sharp Su Chin Pak, known for a smart MTV news report. Each episode was full of luxury and character. Viewers were amazed by Mariah Carey's closet, which was bigger than most apartments, amazed at Shaquille O'Neal's movie theater that also worked as a bowling alley, and amused by Britney Spears' heart-shaped bathtub. But it wasn't about the fancy stuff. Cribs also showed viewers the surprisingly down-to-earth moments in these lavish homes. People also saw Jay-Z relaxing in his game room, NEM reading bedtime stories to his daughter, and Jessica Simpson showing off a collection of cookbooks. Beyond the homes, Cribs became a place for celebrities to share their hobbies and passions. It showed Michael Jackson Zoo at Neverland Ranch, peeked into Martha Stewart's craft room, and even joined Venus and Serena Williams for a backyard tennis match. The show also had its silly moments. Do you remember Snoop Dogg's inflatable hot tub shaped like a giant blunt, or Vanilla Ice's pet iguanas? Cribs didn't take itself too seriously, which made it even more fun. Not every mansion was a palace, though. Cribs also showed the homes of up-and-coming stars living in more modest places. People saw early glimpses of Lady Gaga's small New York apartment and witnessed the humble beginnings of future big stars like Zac Efron and Ashley Tisdale. These episodes reminded viewers that even the biggest stars started somewhere, adding a relatable touch to the show's world of luxury. By 2005, Cribs had become a huge deal, inspiring many imitators and parodies. It fed the viewers curiosity about how celebrities live, offering a peek into the world most viewers can only dream of. But beyond the glitz and glamour, the show also gave viewers a human look at the people behind the fame, reminding viewers that even the biggest stars wear pyjamas, love their pets, and sometimes have strange taste in poolside furniture. While the original Cribs reigned supreme in the early 2000s, its reach extended beyond the American border. In 2005 and 2006, Canadian viewers got their own taste of celebrity home tours with a series of Canadian-made Cribs episodes. These episodes offered a glimpse into the lives of their own national stars, showcasing the unique flavor of Canadian celebrity living, perhaps with a touch less Hollywood excess and a lot more maple syrup on the breakfast table. But Cribs, ever evolving, didn't stay stagnant. In 2007, the show underwent a major makeover, embracing the era of high definition with a visually stunning new format. Gone were the grainy shots and shaky camera work. In their place came crisp visuals and sleek graphics, giving viewers a truly immersive experience. The narration mantle was passed to a fresh voice, ushering in a new era for the show. To celebrate this revamp Cribs, a special episode dubbed Priciest Pads kicked off the season, hosted by the glamorous Kimora Lee Simmons. This exclusive peek into the most extravagant celebrity homes left viewers breathless, wondering just how many bedrooms one person could possibly need. With its international expansion and constant reinvention, Cribs proved its staying power wasn't limited to a single format or location. It evolved alongside its audience, adapting to changing taste and technologies while staying true to its core charm. Whether it was Canadian hockey stars showing off their lakefront cabins or Hollywood A-listers revealing their hidden home cinemas, Cribs continued to satisfy the viewers' insatiable curiosity about the lives of the rich and famous, proving that in the world of celebrity homes, there's always something new to discover. In September 2008, the show found itself entering the world of syndication, seeking a new life on local television stations across the United States. But this wasn't just a repackaging. Linton Entertainment, the syndication partner, took a heavy editorial hand, drastically altering the program. References to its original home, MTV, were meticulously erased. The iconic logo replaced with the generic cribs. Even the soundtrack got an overhaul, swapping the original tunes for royalty-free production music. Sadly, the changes didn't stop there. Narrators Tiffany Thiessen and Ross Matthews, despite remaining credited, vanished from the syndicated episodes. Their witty interjections and signature coming up segments were replaced by either deafening silence or the bland pronouncements of an anonymous announcer. 
This heavily edited version of Cribs failed to captivate audiences. Offered as a barter to stations, it found itself relegated to the least desirable time slots on lesser watched channels. By September 2009, the experiment was over and the syndicated Cribs met its quiet demise. The show's original identity had been stripped away, its soul replaced by a pale imitation, and ultimately, viewers weren't watching it. After the fall of the show in 2009, Cribs branched out, aiming its spotlight at two distinct cultural spheres. For country music fans, a brand new spin-off, CMT Cribs, premiered on January the 24th. Gone were the pop stars and Hollywood elite, Instead, viewers were invited into the homes of their favorite country crooners, stock car heroes, and fearless bull riders, along with other icons of the American Southeast. This tailored perspective captured the unique flavor of the region, showcasing sprawling ranches, decked out tour buses, and of course a healthy dose of southern hospitality. Meanwhile, back on MTV, Cribs underwent a dramatic shift. The original focus on celebrities faded, replaced by a reality tinge exploration of teenage life in extravagant homes. Teen Cribs debuted, throwing open the doors on lavish mansions and decked out apartments belonging to ordinary teenagers with extraordinary living situations. This new direction aimed to capture the aspirational desires and peer pressure inherent in high school life, highlighting the pressures and perks of wealth at a young age. These departures from the original Cribs format reflected changing trends in both television and society. The rise of reality TV fueled the public's appetite for a peek behind the curtain, and CMT Cribs and Teen Cribs capitalized on this by delving into specific niches with dedicated fan bases. CMT offered a glimpse into the world of country music and southern culture, while Teen Cribs tapped into the fascination with teenage life and the allure of wealth. Ultimately, these spin-offs demonstrated the adaptability of the Cribs format. By catering to distinct demographic interests and cultural currents, they proved that the thrill of exploring lavish lifestyles transcended celebrity circles and could be applied to diverse social landscapes. Whether it was Carrie Underwood's sprawling Tennessee estate or a teenager's tricked-out game room, CMT Cribs and Teen Cribs offered a different window into the world, revealing unique dreams and realities under the same lens of opulent living. After a hiatus, MTV Cribs returned to the small screen in September 2010, albeit with a slight twist. Instead of solely showcasing the opulent abodes of the latest A-listers, the revived series rekindled the nostalgia of past episodes by revisiting some of its most iconic celebrity homes. Hansen's vibrant childhood haven, complete with their music studio and basketball court, got a fresh coat of paint, reminding viewers of their pop star heyday. Similarly, viewers peeked into a revamped version of rocker Twiggy Ramirez's gothic castle-inspired abode, marvelling at its macabre charm once again. But Cribs wasn't just content with a trip down memory lane. The revival also sprinkled in a handful of brand new episodes to keep the format fresh. Late 2010 saw audiences step into the Las Vegas lair of magician Penn Gillette, complete with a secret escape hatch and enough oddities to fill a Ripley's Believe It or Not museum. Actress Julie Benz offered a glimpse into a California ranch estate. Its rustic charm a stark contrast to the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. And for those craving a dose of athletic luxury, boxing champion Manny Pacquiao's sprawling Filipino mansion, equipped with a private boxing gym and infinity pool, provided the perfect escape. These new episodes proved that Cribs still had the pulse of popular culture, showcasing not just the extravagant possessions of celebrities, but also the personalities and passions that shaped their homes. While Hansen's playful digs reflected their youthful energy, Gillette's unconventional abode mirrored his eccentric persona. For Benz, the ranch represented a sanctuary from the limelight, while Pacquiao's home served as a testament to his dedication and hard work. The 2010-2011 revival may not have marked a full-fledged return to Cribs' golden age, but it demonstrated the show's enduring appeal. By blending nostalgic revisits with exciting new features, it proved that the allure of peeking into the private lives of the rich and famous never truly fades. Whether reliving the iconic homes of yesteryear or stepping into the lavish abodes of the present, Cribs reminded us that sometimes the most fascinating journeys are the ones that take us inside the walls of someone else's world. After its initial run in 2010, MTV Cribs took a break from television screens, and several factors likely contributed to this hiatus. One reason was the changing media landscape. 
Social media platforms like Instagram and reality TV shows such as Keeping Up With The Kardashians were on the rise, offering fans instant access to celebrity lives and homes. This abundance of content may have made Cribs' focus on celebrity homes feel less unique. Another factor was the evolving preferences of viewers. Audiences were becoming more interested in unscripted and authentic content as seen in shows like Jersey Shore, which portrayed a grittier side of celebrity life. Cribs' emphasis on lavish mansions and extravagant lifestyles might have seemed out of touch with these changing tastes. Production challenges also played a role. It became increasingly difficult to secure high-profile celebrities for Cribs, as many stars preferred to control their public image through their own channels. This made scheduling and logistics more challenging for the show. Additionally, MTV was undergoing a programming shift during that time, focusing more on scripted programming and adult animation and moving away from reality TV. This change in direction may have left less room for a show like Cribs in their lineup. Cribs didn't stay dormant for long after its initial run from 2000 to 2010. In 2017, the peak into extravagant living spaces made a brief comeback in a condensed format for a Snapchat Discover. This revival, spearheaded by former MTV president Sean Atkins, launched on June the 3rd with DJ Steve Aoki showcasing his Las Vegas pad as the premiere episode. New installments aired every Saturday for a limited run, offering a fresh twist on the classic formula for a digitally native audience. The Snapchat revival proved a hit, nabbing the title of the highest rated premiere for a Snapchat show ever, and buoyed by its success, a second season grace screened in mid-2018, further solidifying Cribs' enduring appeal. But then, a four-year hiatus settled over the beloved show. Fast forward to July 2021, and fans rejoiced as news broke of another Cribs resurrection, this time returning to its traditional full-length format on MTV. The new season promised a diverse roster of home-proud stars, with household names like Martha Stewart, Big Sean, Rick Ross, and even the OG reality queen Snooki, stepping up to unveil their personal sanctuaries. The beloved Su Chin Pak, who replaced Ananda Lewis as a narrator in the mid-2000s, also made a triumphant return, lending her familiar voice to guide viewers through these luxurious abodes. This latest iteration of Cribs premiered on August 11, 2021, welcoming viewers back into the opulent, quirky, and sometimes surprisingly relatable world of celebrity homes. Season 19, which aired in October 2022, proved that even in the age of constant social media glimpses, Cribs still holds a special place in the pop culture landscape. Its enduring fascination lies in its ability to satisfy our innate curiosity about how the other half lives, offering a window into the private spaces of those who exist under the constant glare of the spotlight. From extravagant mansions perched on Hollywood hills, to surprisingly modest apartments bursting with personality, Cribs provided a diverse tapestry of living experiences. It was a show that transcended mere property envy, often revealing unexpected insights into the personalities and passions of its featured stars. Whether it was Martha Stewart's meticulously organized craft room or Big Sean's sneaker haven, each tour offered a glimpse into the personal spaces that shaped the lives of these larger-than-life figures. Cribs wasn't just about gawking at gilded bathtubs and infinity pools. It was a show that sparked conversations about taste, ambition, and the ever-evolving definition of home. It was a reminder that even beyond the carefully curated public image, celebrities were individuals with quirks, hobbies, and spaces that reflected their unique personalities. In a world of carefully constructed online personas, Cribs offered a refreshingly unfiltered look at the private lives of those who fascinated us, proving that even the most glamorous stars had laundry to do and cereal in the pantry. MTV Cribs, the show that invited viewers into the opulent sanctuaries of the rich and famous, wasn't always as real as it seemed. Beneath the veneer of extravagant mansions and celebrity brags lurked a series of controversies that exposed the show's willingness to bend the truth for entertainment's sake. In 2004, reality came crashing down on MTV Cribs when the real owner of Jar Rule's featured mansion slapped the network with a lawsuit. Turns out, the alleged party palace belonged to someone else, and the filming crew was an exactly gentle guess. The lawsuit accused MTV and Jar Rule of causing property damage during their raucous shoot, adding a layer of unscripted drama to the show's carefully curated image. 
The very first episode of Cribs threw a curveball, showcasing Robbie Williams lounging in a luxurious villa that, unbeknownst to viewers, wasn't his. The rock DJ was actually renting the mansion from actress Jane Seymour, later admitting the charade on the Kumars at number 42. This early deception set the stage for a recurring theme. Not everything on Cribs was as owned as it appeared. The rapper known for flaunting his wealth took it to a whole new level in his Cribs episode, boasting about a trio of stunning Ferraris. Except, as eagle-eyed car enthusiasts soon discovered, all three belonged to a private collector, merely loaned out for filming purposes. This incident highlighted the show's tendency to blur the lines between reality and carefully constructed hype. The Kardashian clan knows a thing or two about reality TV manipulation, and Cribs wasn't an exception. Kim's episode took viewers on a tour of her opulent home in Hidden Hills, only fans to later discover it belonged to her mother. Kim's actual Beverly Hills residence remained unseen, raising questions about the show's commitment to showcasing genuine celebrity residences. The story behind Jojo Levesque's Cribs episode takes a poignant turn. At the time of filming, the young singer was experiencing homelessness, living out of hotels with her mother. The mansion featured on the show belonged to an uncle, used to create an illusion of wealth far removed from a reality. This story exposed the show's potential to exploit personal vulnerabilities for the sake of ratings and entertainment. Those controversies expose the darker side of the reality TV gold rush, where authenticity is often sacrificed at the altar of entertainment. MTV Cribs may have entertained us with glimpses into celebrity lifestyles, but the truth behind some of its episodes serves as a cautionary tale about the carefully constructed realities we consume through our screens. So it's somehow clear that not everything that glistens on TV is truly gold, and sometimes the most opulent Cribs are nothing more than borrowed facades. Well, as Cribs' return to screen is concerned, the success of the show in the past has remained tremendous, and MTV might decide to continue it. However, the celebrity home tour genre has become crowded with platforms like Instagram and YouTube offering similar glimpses into stars' lives. To stay competitive, MTV might shift its focus to other content. Viewer preferences may have changed, with less interest in traditional reality TV and more in scripted dramas or interactive formats. Despite this, there are still possibilities for another season of Cribs, as it can come with new segments or adjustments to match current trends. Special episodes for anniversaries or with specific themes could provide a fresh take on the classic format. Moreover, MTV could explore an online version of Cribs, capitalizing on the popularity of digital content on platforms like YouTube or their own streaming service. Ultimately, the decision rests with MTV and their assessment of audience interest and market trends. While a return in coming years with the original format seems unlikely, fans can expect something different from the producers. Last but not least, the show Cribs helped to popularize the reality TV genre, paving the way for shows like The Osbournes and Keeping Up With The Kardashians. It showed that viewers were interested in watching the everyday lives of celebrities, not just their on-screen personas. The show's success also led to an increase in the number of celebrity home tours available online and in magazines. Cribs also had a significant impact on the way we perceive celebrities. The show made it clear that celebrities were not just talented entertainers, but also wealthy individuals with access to luxurious lifestyles. This contributed to a growing fascination with celebrity culture and a desire to emulate the lives of the stars. Despite its popularity, Cribs was not without its critics. Some argued that the show was superficial and materialistic, focusing on wealth and possessions over substance. Others accused it of being fake, suggesting that some celebrities rented homes or borrowed cars for their appearances on the show. The show went off the air in 2022, but it has continued to have a lasting impact on pop culture. The show's format has been copied by countless other shows, and its influence can still be seen in the way we consume celebrity news and entertainment. Cribs wasn't just entertainment, it was a time capsule of early 2000s culture. It showcased changing trends, like the McMansion craze and hip-hop's bling aesthetic. Rapper Nelly's 2003 episode epitomized this era, with a St. Louis home boasting a bowling alley, theater, and exotic fish-filled aquarium, reflecting a time of conspicuous consumption. Britney Spears' 2002 episode featured her Louisiana mansion's pink walls and lavish decor, embodying the era's obsession with pop princesses. In contrast, Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick's modest homes showed another side, 
emphasizing family life over extravagance, offering a diverse view of success and happiness. Cribs may be off the air, but its legacy lives on. The show helped to shape the way we think about reality TV, celebrity and wealth. It gave us a glimpse into the world of the rich and famous, and it made us question what it means to be successful. Whether you loved it or hated it, there's no denying that Cribs was a cultural touchstone that changed the way we see the world.